There's been a lot of discussion in the last few years about developing a 21st century classroom. But what does that look like? Here is a prime example from Sunset Hills Elementary School. On her desk, this student has a tablet, cell phone, pencil, and paper, all being used together for a research project. What's interesting to note, though, is that none of her technological devices are supplied by the school or the district. They are all student-owned and used as part of a new initiative in DiceArt called BYOD, or Bring Your Own Device. BYOD is a program that allows students to bring their own devices into class, um, laptops, uh, iPads, iPods, Kindles, basically anything that can connect to the internet. A lot of times they come in and they have their, their little iPod touches and they only use them for entertainment purposes. And so my big thing is I want them to understand how they can use those for educational purposes as well. I want them to know how to use the different applications on there and how that can help them in school as well because they're wonderful for entertainment but they're also fantastic for education. The vision behind this concept resides in DiceArt's efforts to leverage what the students already had in their backpacks and use it to supplement what was already in the classroom. Then it was a matter of educating teachers on management, best practices, and uses for the devices. Really, they can use their device in any type of subject, any type of curriculum. In language arts, you can do book studies, you can have kids reading on them. They have calculator applications, they have graphing applications for mathematics. They have, um, for science, I use it a lot for research. EduCreations is a great app that's also free. Edmodo is a wonderful app that's free, and you can use those across the board in any classroom, in any setting. Beyond research and projects, students oftentimes use their own devices for simple, everyday tasks like taking notes in a classroom. Some of the kids expressed that it's easier for them to take it on notes. I took that um, and decided to try it, and they have their notes on there. And in fact, I'll say reference your notes, and they have it right there on their phone. They're, it's not a paper that they've lost. They always know where their cell phones are, so it's really actually been better than having them take paper notes. Now you might think this practice might be counterproductive for students. Perhaps their notes aren't as thorough as writing it down on paper. Or perhaps they can't keep up typing on a cell phone versus a piece of paper. But these are teenagers we're talking about here. Their lives revolve around cell phones, and they're experts at it. For biology, I take notes on the PowerPoints that she gives, which helps me a lot because instead of using paper, my hand getting tired from writing notes is a lot better from, for me to actually have it in my hand because I can write out more stuff instead of writing it out on paper because it's easier <laughs> and it's a lot faster. One of the main challenges in allowing students to bring their devices into the classroom is identifying how to secure and monitor them. First, by requiring that students access the internet via the district's Wi-Fi connection, all activity is filtered and protected. The other major concern is making sure students are on task, which is solved by a little bit of logic and a teacher who circulates as the students work. I have a pretty basic rule, it's just if we have them out, they're up on the table and if I can see them. I tell them I want to presume honesty and so I can presume they're being honest and truthful and doing what they should be doing with their device if it's out and up on the table. If they're hiding it under the table and I can't see it, I have to presume dishonesty because it looks to me like you're hiding it. And she'll just walk around and just keep an eye on us, but if there's something wrong then kids would put it under their desk and then she knows that there's something up. In a 21st century classroom, most teachers realize now that students learn differently. But what's amazing is that students realize this too, and they understand that technology, even their technology, can help them understand and succeed. Because if we're looking at a textbook and something doesn't make sense and no one else can explain it, you can just look it up and find a website that explains it better for you. It allows you to do more things freely as you're as your own items, you'll be more familiar with them. You know what they're able to handle and you know what every like little feature it has. It allows you to be more diverse. It allows you to do more things efficiently and effectively. BYOD, like all 21st century initiatives, is just one of many tools in the kit designed to harness the excitement of technology and filter that into a student's education. I would definitely recommend teachers allow their students to bring their own devices to school. It's 
wonderfully easy. It connects so much faster than any of our computers can log in. It allows students to get familiar with their own devices and the educational ways that they can use their own devices. And it makes them see their device as not just something they can play with or a toy. They can actually build and be creative and do some really cool things with their own devices that they can then, you know, switch that over to use at home or to use in their personal life as well. From Sunset Hills Elementary and Shatter Ridge High School, I'm Ryan McGinley.